Hello everyone and welcome to this, a first look at Unity. My name is Kasanas. Guys, I am really looking forward to being back on YouTube and I'm really looking forward to this new series. Uh, I mentioned in an, in an earlier video I'm coming back and I'll be, I'll be teaching you guys the same stuff I'm teaching my students at George Brown uh, College here in Toronto. What I really want to do is make sure I start off right. I want to make sure that you guys are up to speed and understand the things that my students are also understanding. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the Unity interface. And for some of you, you might be saying, oh, don't show me that. Just get on with the programming. Guys, I want to make sure that we are all following along and on the same page. And that way, everyone is going to be able to keep up with the, the pace that I'm going at. It's not going to be a fast pace. We're going to be going nice and slow and easy. Uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the game that I've already shown you. Uh, it is going to be a 2D platformer, but I want to make sure that before we start any of that kind of stuff, you guys understand the the uh, engine we're using, understand the, en the interface of the engine we're using, and that way when I mention certain things, you won't be like, I don't know what he's talking about. All right, so let's start off right away. This is Unity, and I'm currently using Unity 5. It's 64-bit version, the, per the personal version. It's not a... It's not a paid program. I didn't pay for this. It's absolutely free. Go and check it out. Just do a quick search on, I think it's www.unity3d.com, and right there you guys will find it and download uh, the latest version of Unity. And like I said, the personal edition is great. Uh, with Unity 5, they made a ton of updates, and they have, uh, have given you a lot of things that in the past you had to pay for. Okay? So, first of all, when you guys open up Unity, it might not look exactly like this. Uh, Unity is extremely flexible and you can set it up any way you want. You can set it up so your workflow is what's going to work best for you. Okay, So uh, I'm going to discuss the, 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 uh, the different panels I've currently got up uh, and, and if yours aren't in the same place, don't worry about it. Over here, we'll start right in this, right in this corner over here, the layouts. Uh, there are a bunch of different layouts. Uh, you can set them up, you know, two by three, uh, anything you want. Go through and look and see if there is something that you like in there, okay? I am, I am, well, now I'm back on the default. <laughs> But that's okay. That'll make it easier for us to take a look at later on. Uh, not only not only can you change things around like this, but you can actually, you know, by going through the different default, or sorry, the different uh, layouts, but you can also, did I have one in here that, uh, I didn't have a saved one, eh? Well, that kind of stinks. Anyway, you can go through and you can grab different panels as well. These are all different panels, clicking on them. You can drag them, you can, you can tear them off, for example, like I just tore that off and I put it underneath where I can't get it, underneath my, uh, underneath my recording software. There we go. You can drag it just like that. You can drag it around. You can pin it somewhere else just by dragging and dropping it. Okay. Uh, let me move this around a bit because I don't like having my hierarchy up here. I like it down here. Uh, and I like to have my scene view up here with a bunch of different stuff. My console is fine right there for now. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the different things uh, that we've got up here. And this is now an entirely different layout. I didn't actually save my own layout. And you can. You can go in here. You can, if I, something I like, I can simply say save layout and I can call this uh, Brian's, oh, you don't know my real name, Kasanis's uh, layout. All right. Bam. Forget my real name. Boom. Okay. So now if I want to, I can come back here and say, oh, use Kasanis's layout whenever I want. Okay, so uh, that's just a quick look at the actual uh, manip how you can manipulate the screen itself. Let's take a look at some of the different options you've got in here. What we're kind of taking a look at right here, currently in uh, in this largest portion that I've got set up here, is called the scene view, and the scene view is basically where you build uh, things. Let me open up a scene so you can see what I'm saying. Open scene. There we go. So in the scene view, you can you can go through and you can you can uh, put different things in in the location you want. This is basically where you build everything. This is where all of the action takes place, right down here. And you can see that I've got a number of different things in here. This is the game that I currently had uh, that, that we're actually going to take a look at later on. Uh, and uh, this is how you build it. I've got a nice long flow here uh, and you can you can use the same Maya controls that you are using if you are used to Maya using all very similar Maya controls in order to be able to manipulate this camera. Okay, uh, right up here we can see we've got different um, tools that we can use. This first one is the grab tool, so if I have the grab tool selected I can move everything around and I'm simply doing that by using my mouse and my left mouse button and I'm just dragging it around, dragging it around like that. 
All right. The next one is the move tool or the translation tool. Now, if I've got an object selected, let me zoom in on something here. And to zoom in, I can select something and say F and it automatically zooms in. Same as in Maya, so I'm focusing on that. Uh, and I've got this rocket selected. So this is the rocket that you guys saw in the game earlier. Uh, if I have the translation tool set up, I can move it about. And you can see I get these manipulator handbars here that I can move it all around. All right, let's go back, ZZ. Uh, control Z, Control Z to go back. Uh, with the rotation tool, same as in Maya, I can rotate. Boop, 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 boop. It's almost all, I'm currently in 2D, and if I wasn't in 2D, I could be in 3D mode, which I am in here. Sorry, I'll show you that right away. This little button allows you to toggle between 2D mode, I was building a 2D game here, and 3D mode, just like that. So you can obviously build uh, 3D and 2D uh, objects within Maya, or sorry, within Unity. Okay, and you can see that I can rotate and I can translate in, in, uh, in three dimensions. All right. The next tool is the scale tool, and that lets you get make things bigger and smaller. Control Z, Control Z, and the last tool is the rec tool. Now the rec tool is is a two D tool, and the rec tool allows you it, it gives you uh, this kind of uh, boxy thing here, and it allows you to move. It's it's basically for uh, manipulating um, uh, rectangular objects, things that are based on a rec transform, and we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. Uh, but that's basically what it's for. It's more of it's a two D tool really. Uh, so that's that's basically your tools. Now you also have the options if you don't want to use uh, if you don't want to go up here and having to keep click things and oh, I want to move things around and click up here. What you can do is you can still use the same Maya. Uh, the same Maya uh, t um, controls in order to move around. So by using my Alt button and uh, by you can see if I push my Alt button, it automatically changed over to the hand from translate to hand. And then using my left mouse button, I can move all around. All right. So it's exactly the same tools as you uh, will find in Maya. So if you've watched my Maya tutorials, you're going to be fami familiar with how the tools are going to move around in here as well. All right. Um, we could also switch between where our pivots are, and we can whether it's a center pivot or or, or a, an immediate pivot, um, or we can switch between global and local space, uh, and that basically changes uh, how your your object is being manipulated, whether it's being manipulated around its own, um, uh, like within its own coordinate system or within the global coordinate system. All right, that's what that is. Uh, going all the way across here, we've got uh, our play tools. These are our play tools right here. This again is just above the scene view, and I'm still talking about the scene view here, kind of. Um, just above here is your play tools. And if I hit the play button, bam, uh, the game itself is going to start up, and it's down here in this game view. It's very loud, so I'm going to turn that off for now. Uh, down inside here is the is the game view, but if I maximize on play, bam, and pushes again, my entire screen becomes the game. I'll turn it off again because it's so loud. I didn't actually put any kind of volume control within the game itself. All right, so that is the scene view. Gizmos uh, up here allow you to see the different gizmos of the world. All right, so you're going to be able to see the gizmos in 3D, and you're going to be able to see the different things. So these the different gizmos that are going to allow you to, to uh, like what you're going to actually see, whether it's an audio source or a camera, etc. We can see we've got a camera right there, for example. Uh, that's all that the gizmos are going to show. Uh, that's good. So that is our scene view. That is our scene view right there. Next to my scene view, right next to this scene view right here, uh, is my inspector. And uh, the inspector, when I click on something, let's say I click on this rocket, Unity is made up of what's called game, uh, sorry, a Unity game or a game you're building in Unity is made up of, of several different things called game objects. And game objects, it, it's, the, it's the root of all things in Unity. So anything you create in Unity is a game object, all right? By clicking on, on the object that you're interested in, so for in our case, I clicked on the rocket right here. If I take a look at over here in the inspector, the inspector will show me the information about that different, uh, about that different object. So everything, everything in Unity, uh, every game object is going to have this topmost uh, transform node. This transform node allows you to, to uh, move it um, around in 3D space. Uh, well, not everything, actually, you know what, because the HUD. Uh, actually uses a rec transform, uh, so it's going to have it's going to actually have some kind of 
<laughs> some way of manipulating it in space. Uh, but let's go back to our rocket for a minute. Um, so almost every single game object you ever see within Unity is going to have this uh, transform node on top, and that allows us to manipulate it in, in 3D space, uh, the position, the rotation, and the scale. All right. Additional components might be added to a game object in order to create something new. So in this case, in this case, by selecting my rocket, uh, I can see that I have a transform node, and I've got myself something called a sprite renderer. And the sprite renderer is basically what allows me to see the rocket. Okay. If we take a look at a more complex object, so let's take a look at, let's say, the character. Boop. The character again has a transform node, we're taking a look at this guy right here, has a transform node, but you can see there are various other um, components that have been added to this character in order to make a new object. So what you basically start off with is a game object, and the game object then has components added to it to eventually create other objects you're going to use in your game itself. So in this case here, I've got a number of things. I've got my sprite renderer, so once again we can see the character. Uh, we've got a rigid body and a collider, a couple of different colliders here, and both of those are physics objects, and we'll discuss those later on in, uh, in the actual, uh, in the actual uh, videos I make concerning this game. Um, so these are different physics objects that allow it to either interact with things or be affected by gravity, etc. Uh, we've got an animator, and an animator allows us to make this thing move. And we've got a number of scripts, a player script, a, a health script, and an audio source that is going to... Uh, and uh, Sorry, these scripts all are things that I've written myself that are going to allow me to manipulate the character in some way or do something or act on that object in some way. And lastly, we have an audio source, and the audio source is going to allow me to, um, to create sound that comes out of this, this character. So you can see that there's a, a big difference between the simple rocket and the more complex uh, character. And by, like I said, by adding, uh, by adding different components to a game object, you can create different, more complex or more simplistic things that you're going to use to build your game. That's what your game is made up of, a number of different game objects. Okay? So, and that, all of that information can be seen right here in the inspector. If you don't have the inspector, I'm sure you can get it under window. You can find it right there, inspector. All right? And it'll pop up. All right, let's go down here and we're going to take a look at the hierarchy window. The hierarchy window, uh, actually, you know, let's take a look at the project window first. The project window, um, if you don't have it, again, go under window, find project, bloop, click it. Uh, the project window, it shows you everything that you have available to you to build your game. And if we take a look at, at this right in here, um, this, these folders here, these folders are actual folders on my computer. It's a directory structure that's built onto my computer. Unity uses a, a, the common directory structure that you use on your computer uh, in order to store information about the game. And I have created a number of different um, folders within my directory structure to maintain uh, information about this game. So for example, if I take a look at sprites, uh, the sprites folder, all of these sprites are available for me to use in this game. Okay, They are available within the Unity directory on my computer and therefore they have been read in here, they're under the assets folder of my Unity, in, in Unity uh, in, on my computer and therefore they can be used in the game. All right. Whenever I take something and I drag it into the game, it will come over here and appear, appear in the hierarchy. So, for example, let's go to this prefab folder. We'll discuss prefabs later on in much more detail, but basically a prefab is an object that I have created in Unity uh, that I want to use multiple times. So if we take a look right here, there's something called ground, and each of these ones here are a ground. Okay? If I drag this and drop it on there, boom, I've got another ground in place. All right. So prefabs are basically uh, objects that I've created that I say I want to use them multiple times and therefore I want to save them uh, on a folder, in a folder, and uh, I want to be able to drag and drop them into place in my game. Okay? We're going to get into that later on, don't worry about it for now. But you can see when I've dragged and dropped this in from the hierarchy, uh, sorry, from the, from the project window, it'll automatically appear somewhere in here, right there, ground number nine. So it's automatically appeared in the hierarchy window. The hierarchy window, unlike the project window, the project window is everything you can use in your game. The hierarchy window is everything you have used in your game. So every anytime I drag and drop something into here or into the hierarchy window from the project window, from the project tab, I drag it and drop it somewhere into the game, it's going to automatically appear here in the hierarchy, meaning it has now been included into the game itself. All right, and I don't want this anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. Boop, it's gone. All right, so that is the hierarchy window. And the hierarchy window is going to go through, you see these little tiny arrows here that go up and down. Those little arrows are showing me the, the hierarchy 
of the individual object. So if I go back again and let's take a look at our character. Where's our character? Character right here. If we take a look at the character, I did tell you earlier that uh, this character was made up of a number of different components. And that's true. This game object called character has a number of different components on it. However, there's a little tiny arrow here next to character. And if I open that little tiny window, I can see, un or sorry, that little tiny arrow, I can see underneath there are a number of other objects, a ground check and a gun tip. And again, guys, we're going to discuss that in the thing. Don't worry about it for now. But for now, all you have to understand is the hierarchy shows the parent and the child relationship between other game objects. It shows the hierarchy of other game objects. So the character is my parent object. And underneath that, parented beneath that character, is a ground check and another, uh, another asset called uh, gun tip. Each of these, ground check and gun tip, are additional... Uh, are additional um, uh, game objects, all right? And if I click on it, it appears here in the inspector. Gun tip appears here in the inspector. All right, so what else do I have up here right now? I have got the console screen. The console, the console tab will show me um, anything that's gone wrong, so kind of any kind of errors or warnings you might have, or any kind of uh, debug information that you might have added into your game will appear here in the console. If I've got some kind of error, it'll tell me here what the error is, and I'll be able to go on and check and see uh, what's going on here. So right now this is saying that there's something called player, uh, player health dot con uh, control movement that's assigned a value that's never moved, uh, never used. Whatever, I'll check it out. Everything seems to work. Uh, character uh, play health, player health is is dead, is not as assigned, but never used. Again, not worried about it. I'll check it out later on. So that is the console screen. All right, it might not be in the same location as mine right now. Uh, up, go up here, find it. Console, 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 right there. Console. Click on it if it doesn't show up here, and it's going to appear somewhere else. All right, and like I said, you can drag this and you can drop it anywhere you want. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't look the same as mine. Don't worry about it. You can drag it and drop it. All right. Lastly, the screen that I have up here is the game screen right down here. And this is going to give you uh, the view of your actual game. Uh, so this is what your game is going to look at, look like. In this situation, it's not going to look exactly like this because uh, what I've got in here is um, I've got menu systems uh, flopped on top of it right now. Uh, but it's going to give you the view of, of what your game is actually going to look like when it's played. Where is my, where's my ability to stretch this? Where is it? Anyway, this yeah, this is this is what your game is going to look like um, when uh, when it's played. There we go. Um, boop. There we go. So this is what's going to show you basically how the game's going to look. Uh, you can leave it up all the time. I, I normally do just so I can kind of see if I like what it looks like. Uh, I leave it small in the corner like this, uh, and it's got a number of different. Um, oh, there's a mute audio. There's a number of different options on here. So if I say mute audio now, and now I play it, we shouldn't get drowned out. Perfect. There we go. Woo, woo, woo. My guy can run. Anyway, um, this is what it's showing me right here. It's, it's actually my game. If maximize on play is not on, when I say play, it's just going to play down here. And we can see what the actual game is going to look like in that location. So that is the screens that I've currently got up. All right. That's the ones I currently have up. Let's turn mute off. Ah! I forgot how loud it was. Uh, let's turn mute off for now. So with maximize on play off, uh, it it's, uh, stays small, and maximize on play, it gets big. And you guys can can, can uh, swap between whatever you want on here. Uh, the different aspect ratios, you can decide, uh, let's say you decided early that my your game is going to only be uh, 16 by 9, or it's going to be a specific uh, ratio uh, for a very specific thing, like maybe you're building for a very particular phone or whatever. Uh, you can set up your, uh, your aspect ratio here so that it, it looks like it's going to look. All right, free means as I stretch it, it's going to it's going to stretch as well. Uh, you know, so that's basically what it means. And you can really decide, um, you know, what you want to use. I usually leave it on free, uh, but if you've got a very particular size of game in mind, uh, then make sure that you have got it set up appropriately. All right. So uh, away from what I've already got here. I've already discussed here, away from what we've, uh, we've taken a look at. Up here along the top corner, we have got our menus. Uh, file basically allows you to start new scenes. Um, Unity is made up of a project, uh, and the project is the game itself, and then that project is made up of a number of scenes. Uh, the scene might be something simple, like in this case, I only have a single scene. Let's see, I think I have it under assets. Yes, I only have a single scene called main scene. Give it a better name than that, that's a crappy name. Um, but main scene basically is my entire thing. But if I had wanted to, I could have had a, uh, you know, a loading screen, a a uh, 
uh, a credits screen, uh, an information screen, like all these different things would be made up of different scenes, for example. You can do it that way. So each one is a different scene. Or maybe each level is a different scene. Maybe you have, you know, the dungeon level is scene one and the uh, space level is scene two. Whatever you want. Um, it basically is made up of a project, so the entire thing, and uh, and the um, and the number of scenes. All right. So this allows you to create new scenes, open new scenes, build set. Oh, build settings. Build settings uh, lets you decide where you're going to build it for. So I've currently got this set up for Mac uh, and Linux. But you have a number of options along here that you can actually build for. Don't get excited when you actually see things like Xbox 360 and Xbox One. You know, I did when I first. I was like, "What? Wow! I'm going to start building Xbox games." Well, you can't actually. Um, currently. You have to actually be a, an accepted developer uh, in order to be able to to um, compile games for the 360 or the Xbox One or the the Vista, the, sorry the Vita or the or the uh, PS4. That might change. That all might change actually because I know Xbox One is supposed to change all of their boxes into developer kits. Maybe they already have, which would be super awesome. Anyway, this allows you to choose the different, uh, what, like what you're doing it for, whether it's for web, iOS, etc., etc. All right, player settings right over here. Uh, things like you know everything, resolution, everything for each individual, uh, each individual one of these um, renderable uh, or excuse me, uh, compilable. Uh, options you can set the different things in here so for PC I can set the default screen size etc you guys can scroll through this and kind of take a look at it if you want to it also allows me to for example whoop, right up here set up my different um, textures for things like the cursor or the icon for the game you know things like that things like that all right that's player settings uh, down here we've got the build and the build and run and this is basically will take any any of the um, scenes you've got and hitting the build button will automatically build your game for you and create an executable game which will uh, depending on your options that you've chosen depending on the platform option you've chosen um, will produce uh, various different things that allow it to run on those various different platforms build and run does the same thing build your game into an executable and plays it right away Okay, boom. Um, yeah, that's basically the uh, that's basically this first menu. Edit, like every other meta edit, uh, allows you to change different things. I'm not going to go through what a paste does because I'm sure you guys can figure that out. Assets uh, allows you to create different things. You can see here that I can create all the different fold like folders and 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 uh, scripts and controllers and everything else that I might possibly need. Game objects again allows me to create individual game objects. Uh, so uh, in in here I can either create an empty game object or a child of a of an existing game object, a particle system, audio systems, anything you you kind of want to build is in here. All right, uh, a lot of our 3D objects, etc. You guys can take a look through this as well. Components, again, exactly the same thing. Add-on components. Windows are your various windows that you might be interested in uh, using. We're going to take a look at a lot of these things once we actually get into the into the game itself. Uh, so I'm not going to go over them right now. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of these different things. All right, so don't worry about it. For now, click through it. Lastly, help about Unity, etc., etc. All right. So guys, that is it. That is all I really want to show you right now. Uh, I'm not going to go further into the interface. I think that's a pretty good start. I think that's probably like a 30 minute video right there. A lot of information coming at you guys, but I wanted everyone to kind of start off on the same page. So we're all kind of working from the same spot. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you're going to like this series. I'm really looking forward to it. The main purpose of this series, like I've already mentioned, is for the students at uh, George Brown College. It is a course that I'm teaching, prototyping in 2D. I, I think that as I teach other courses, uh, I think I might try and put them all up here on YouTube. Uh, I'm teaching two courses this semester. Uh, at the time when I'm making this, I'm teaching two courses. I am teaching a uh, prototyping in 2D course. Uh, which is basically building this game right here. Let's say mute on audio so you guys can see it while I'm talking. Um, oh, I didn't maximize on view. Boop. Boop. All right, yeah, so I'm teaching a prototyping in, in 2D uh, course, which is basically going to teach you how to make this simple simple platformer. Uh, it is a, it's an it's a easy little game to understand and to build, uh, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy following along with it. Um, I am also teaching a course on uh, kind of advanced animation, uh, and uh, I might... I might not put that one up immediately, just because I kind of want to uh, uh, do an introduction to animation first. So I might not, I might not do a vi a YouTube videos on that this semester. I might wait uh, a semester or two to, uh, whoops, to put it up. 
Um, but the semester after that, I'm teaching another prototyping, a prototyping in 3D, and I'm also teaching an introduction to animation. So maybe you guys will continue to see uh, videos from me. I got hit. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you did with a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. It lets me know. Guys, it lets me know, and I don't mind. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.